<laughs> How's it going guys? My name is Righteous Nikki and welcome to another Overmind game. This is going to be one of those games that I didn't consider to be quite the best game to show you but I don't have any other footage for the moment. Uh, this I named an okay gray main game. So we're going to be playing on Battlefield of Eternity. The Battlefield of Eternity is probably the only map, yeah the only map that I go gray main actually because while Greymane is pretty decent in general trading, uh, his full potential can be unleashed on doing a lot of single target DPS for someone like the Immortals. So I think he is a pretty, as some meta players would say, top tier for this map particularly. Though Greymane in general isn't a top tier pick. I actually don't, I have no idea what are the top tier picks, I don't fold up. I would assume Ragnaros is a top tier pick, but yeah, generally I don't keep track of uh, the meta things. I just play what I like. And Battle of of Eternity. Yeah, I'm going to skip here a bit because... Eh, he bans events. Alright, I'm going to skip. Um, so, ooh, Stitches here. Mark on Stitches, that's pretty interesting. What is our teammate going to ban? I have no idea. Uh, Vawa, yeah, Vawa is another very, con a very contestant. Uh, DPS for the Immortal race. I would probably say that Greymane and Vav are the top two uh, as dealing DPS. I would actually say that level 10 is always probably the best but it's very hard to make that work of course and also Hammer is also a pretty nice choice for Immortal racing. Artanis with uh, level 1 talent as well is a pretty nice choice. Um, what else? I wouldn't say Tychus. Nah, Tychus isn't very good for Immortal racing. Well, Willidon is a pretty decent choice, I guess, N though not the fastest. Uh, I wouldn't suggest really Willidon for this map, to be honest. I mean, the hunt could kind of work, but generally no. Um, zero to without attack build is pretty decent for immortal damage, but still, wouldn't suggest it. Uh, we're going to ban our Tannis and they're going to take like, the Vara, Vara, yeah. Vara is a pretty solid pick. I've been actually playing a lot of Vava and Sonya recently. Uh, They've been... They, I'm just pretty comfortable with them, especially with Sonya. I don't know why most people uh, pick Sonya with the Berserker Wooty. When I think the leap gives so much value, man. Like, I wouldn't... I, I don't understand why would you choose a bit more damage uh, for a hard CC engage. Like, the leap gives you so much potential that the Berserker doesn't. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Alright, we're going to get the Hacker and Ragnaros. Two very solid picks. The Hacker is pretty good for this map because if he goes the Hacker top, he can roam to the middle at any point, which is pretty strong. We're going to go Rhaegar and Tyrande. Actually, I'm not really surprised by Tyrande because Tyrande is one of those picks that is actually pretty good for the Battlefield of Eternity. Like, the mark itself can give your team such a boost of DPS that even if you don't have the best DPSs to race, that Tyrande mark can change those things for you. And he's probably going for DPS Tyrande, which is perfectly fine. Uh, especially if you have a Rhaegar to back you up. Me personally, I, I like to go DPS Tyrande as a soul support, to be honest. It, it doesn't give that much healing as a normal support, but it's still pretty valuable. And I wouldn't want two supports uh, for uh, for team fighting in general. But Tyrande, Tyrande is pretty a uh, good choice for a battlefield of eternity. Uh, so, my teammates are asking here, uh, yeah, I'm not going Cocktail, generally the Cocktail build is considered a meta build for uh, Grey Main, uh, but I go for Auto Attacks. And who are those 10 better Auto Attackers? Uh, I mean, they're take, take, they have taken Vawa, I don't think Tychus is pretty good versus so many Squishies. And the other good out attacker that is my mind is Zujin, but yeah, they're gonna actually go for Alarak. That's a pretty interesting choice. HC Soul Tank is fine. Karazim is going to be our, our support. Feel like we have too much melee, unfortunately. And Zarya wants to go for a bonus tank here. Hmm. Huh? Liming? Yeah, Ragnar is kind of a uh, off tanky, especially if you go for the cure W. I mean cure E build, so yeah, we don't really want that many melee. Yeah, Living is a perfect choice here. 
I'm a bit afraid of Diawarak though. This doesn't allow me to go for engage. So let's see how this game is going to go. Um. So Ragnaros is going to go to the top. Interesting. Yeah, it's either going to be Ragnaros or the Haka, and Ragnaros is actually pretty good versus uh, for one versus ones. He has some good regeneration, so uh, that's not a big surprise. Now, Greyman actually, if you remember my previous game that I showed you with Greyman, auto attack build. Generally, you want to be poking with auto attacks on a safe distance. Now, actually, I, didn't, I don't think I went for the bullet for this game. Oh, a nice catch on Vala there. Uh, we are also getting caught up though. I'm taking tons of damage. I'm going to die. Yeah, that really sucked. I got marked by Tyrande there, and they bursted me out quite, quite fast there. Unfortunately, I tried actually. I went for in the Worgen from to try to uh, escape with my Q, but yeah, I was a bit CC there by the Swarm of Rager as well, so I couldn't really move that much. Uh, 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 another very nice catch from the Hacker. They're going to secure the Vala Q there. Uh, I don't know how Ragnaros is doing on the top. To be honest, vers uh, Ragnaros versus Awarak. I think Ragnaros should be should be doing better. While Awarak does have the better range to poke, Ragnaros have the has the better sustain and push on the lane. Uh, so I would think that Ragnaros is a superior one versus one duelist than Awarak. Now the hacker is going to get caught there, unfortunately. Actually, so Ragnaros is retreating there. Seems like things aren't going very well for him. I mean, I don't know if if the. Uh, how was his name? Totally forgot. Totally went out of my mind. Not the hacker. Not the hacker. Not Leoric. Uh, not Abator. Awarak. Yeah. <laughs> Awarak. If Awarak actually gets some very nice combo with W and Q, actually he might zone Ragnaros pretty nicely. Um, okay. Seems our teams are um, te teams getting zone. I'm trying to do some damage on the side there. Trend is poking me a bit. Vala seems pretty well, but our team seems to be done. Going to change focus to Tyrande, but I don't really have that much damage uh, to trade with her, especially in ranged mode. Seems our teammates are dying, only me and Ragnaros left. Yeah, this isn't going very good. I see a Rhaegar on the side here, maybe I can do some damage there, though. Awarak is sneaking around here. Man, this Ragnaros can die so easily to an Awarak combo there. To be honest, me as well, but I dodged that combo very nicely there. Uh, I. Oh no, I guess not. I uh, will actually need to defend. Oh, nice catch on Nawarak there. I'm going to try to go aggressive, but I'm going to get stunned. Eight is coming here. I'm taking quite a lot of bleeding there, actually. I'm going to start dealing damage to the Immortal. Now, I went for Wolfheart, of course. Then I'm going to go for Insatio. Insa I don't know how to pronounce this word. Say it. Insatiable. It has to be like that. Or insatiable? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, because I remember from Overwatch, Hanzo, the dragon is sated. So the word is pronounced, pronounced sated. So insatiable? It has to be like that though. I remember that I've heard it somewhere before and I don't remember it pronounced like that. I don't know, you tell me. Um, Alright, we have the Immortal, which is pretty great. Ragnaros is going to keep sucking on the bottom there. Uh, me as a Greyman, I just really want to be auto-attacking with siege damage. Like, I could attack the closest person, which is the tank, but generally, I do want to push for that Immortal damage for their keep there. Oh, I'm going to get stunned by uh, this guy and Rhaegar engaging on me. Rhaegar going very deep, he's going to get caught up. I'm actually throwing some very nice punches there, but that Rhaegar is gaining so much regeneration. We're going to be able to finish him pretty nice the immortal has fallen though uh, we did we did a pretty decent damage to be honest for a first immortal usually with a first immortal we would just kill the two towers at most and we did some pretty nice four damage as well there maybe like 30 percent so that's pretty cool um yeah ragnaros is backing out seems our is besting him so that's not very cool now at this point if you have everyone soaking normally you want to do actually as a Grayman is start taking some camps like uh, if I was me in this situation I would go for the bottom camp Yep, it's, it's very obvious because Grayman has very nice potential to clear when it comes to camps he doesn't have the sustain but when it comes to smaller camps he has the speed to clear them very nicely 
I went for the bonus attack range of my auto attacks. Arak here, uh, mining his positioning. It's four bottom, four top for now, so I decide to go defend. Cause, ooh. Uh, the curse yon. Actually, the hacker is going to be coming on, but the hacker seems in a very bad spot. He's going to get stunned by the ATC. Vow is doing tons of damage to him. He's pretty stuck. Tyrande is stunned. He's healing a bit. He's actually sta the, the stasis is pretty nice. He's going to get marked though and then going to get burned down. Now, Rhaegar is in the same position <laughs> as the hacker is going to get uh, deleted. I'm going to jump for the finish there on the Tyrande. It's going pretty well for us. I really want to clear this camp though first. Our arc. Arak is clearing the bottom one, so it's going to be pretty even 8 uh, level advantage for both of us. Not advantage, but uh, we're a both of the teams are level 8. And we, uh, uh, we have the better speed uh, on damaging the Immortal for now at least, so that's pretty nice. Uh, maybe because they haven't started it to be honest. Uh, but yeah, they did take that camp, so that's why they slowed down. I think we can just raise the Immortal here, well, but it's in, it's in a bad side, the Immortal, so we need to go a bit aggressive. And there's also a camp pushing there. Oh, this was very bad, but fortunately, our XQ didn't went down. Uh, I almost got stunned by Immortal as well. Vow is trading some pretty nasty damage there, and I'm trying to be safe as best as possible. Uh, Ragnaros down, I'm just auto attacking from a safe distance, I'm getting a bit deep there. I got tunnel vision on the Vava and I'm taking some very nasty damage. Uh, at this point, I'm going to continue auto attack. I mean, oh, the, the hacker is marked though, he's taking quite a beating as well. Oh, now the ATC saw me, I'm in a very bad spot. I'm going to try to finish with my last life, Trande. One auto attack from success there, but yeah. Uh, the hacker is going to go finally clear the camp with Liming, which is pretty nice. We have one man down, which is me, and their team is going to try to going to try to damage the immortal now. We do have the advantage of the HP, but our team should not get greedy. Oops. I'm just out tabbing for a bit there. Uh, for some reason. Uh, that's why you're not hearing the sound. I'm back in the game here and I'm coming to defend the Immortal. The hacker is doing a very nice jo job zoning, but he's taking quite the beating as well. Uh, oh, nice meteor there. Alright, I'm going to try to do some damage there. This totem is very annoying. Trying to put a beating on ATC because he's being annoying. Uh, my cat is doing some stuff there. Alright, now we're going to turn the forces here. Uh, yeah, we're trying to poke as much as possible. Tyrande getting caught by the hacker. We're going to be able to finish that. Now I'm going to turn my pressure. Oh, I got silenced by our account by ATC. G getting some tons of damage there. I'm going to trade out some damage back. I'm going to go, go for the throat though. Uh, but I'm not going to follow up my team for the chase of kills. I'm just going to finish out the immortal. Now, I think go for the throat is better here because they have four squishies. And I have a better opportunity to actually use the suit while... Wow, the bullet is pretty could be pretty nice to burn out ATC. I think ATC is generally a decent tank with a decent mobility that can probably survive the bullet and is probably going to be smart enough to not be taking that bonus damage. So, so I'm going to go for go for the throat. It generally is an execution ulti if there wall. It's pretty nice to have that if you want to go deep. Uh, now, the Starfall is actually really zoning us there, but we're going to return the fire now. Ragnaros has the potential, Oh, he's going to get, go in it, going to... Oh, Vow is taking some very nice damage, but Aurak is going to save her. Ragnaros smash missing. Uh, Ragnaros is doing some pretty nice poke there, but... I really didn't like that he missed that ultimate there, alright, I'm going to continue with my auto attack poke there, dealing some siege damage from a safe distance. Uh, yeah, I'm gen generally going to be trying to get the closest enemy wall and maybe dive on them. But for now, oh, they're maybe looking for an engage. Aura went. Did Aura went for the first two? That's not very nice, in my opinion. We're going to go Budwas now. I see Rhaegar uh, overextending a bit. Going to go go for the throat. Now I'm in a bad spot here. Uh, four, four versus one on me. Two of our teammates. No, actually one. Only the Haka died. No, why Karazim left me there. I think we might have done some very nice tradings there if those two didn't decide to back out because Rhaegar was also in a very bad spot there, very bad position and we were at this point 4 versus 4 
if we got a reset on Liming, I think we could have cleared them there, but I really don't know why Karazim decided to back it out. Alright, so we managed to secure this camp. Um, they also secured the bottom camp. Oh, Karazim in a bad spot there. And he's going to get silent, stunned by ATC. Just going to die. Oh, that. Oh, that Karazim though dodged that ATC ulti. I don't know why ATC decided to ult there. That was very cr greedy there. That was a very great ult from ATC. Uh, and, uh, and the ATC ulti ha actually has. The Mosh Pit has 2 minutes cooldown, so that's a big, big loss, in my opinion, for them. Though they did secure a kill. But it's not that important kill because the Immortals are not spawning and we can, we're going to have cars. Oh, the engage from Aurak though. I took a lot of damage. Now I'm going to get beated up by ATC a bit. And I think it's a nice time for me to actually get the hell out of here. Uh, yeah, that Aurak uh, surprised me there, to be honest. Uh, but generally, so Fura smash Ragnar on Rhaegar, not the target that he was looking for. Uh, but I think versus... I mean, generally I feel like Aurak should be played safer with uh, the counter-attack to be honest. I mean, if you think you can make it with the dive, like if you're an aggressive player and you can make it work, then I understand. But generally, most of the times it doesn't work really that well. I'm uh, going to be, yeah, they decided to go for the camp again and we did manage to uh, down the immortal quite fast. Again, I'm going to, oh, actually the immortal spawned in a very favorable position for us. So I'm going to start doing some damage there uh, from the side uncontestedly. Oh, no, 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 no. Holy shit, did you saw that? So, I got... Run the stun into the immortal stun and then an Aurak dive me with his ultimate and silenced me and I think an ATC follow up with a stun. So I just got deleted there with one more guy so that's pretty unfortunate. Um, Vala is trying to... Is uh, not limiting. ATC pushing the fort. Oh the RT might grab a Q on the Vala there. That's pretty close. Oh, was that Vow using actually a Gloom talent? I, I generally don't know how the animation is, but I saw that something blue popped up on the Vow, which is either using an ability or popping a... Oh, Mosh Pit. Yeah, he's going to get burned with the Mark. I'm going to get stunned there, but I think I'm going to survive for now. So they secure the Immortal. Regret is sucking there a bit. We're in a very bad position here. I mean, we're not generally losing, but we were having some very bad fights those past minutes, to be honest. Uh, otherwise, fort-wise, we are pretty equal. We actually have more HP on our fort. Uh, I'm just going to start dealing damage to the Immortal, though I should be a bit careful because Aurak might engage me pretty easily. I'm just going to try to be safe here. Oh boy. With the hack again caught and getting deleted there. Alright, they have 16. Ragnar is going into the Molten Core. Uh, we're actually downing, with the help of Liming, we're downing this Immortal pretty nicely. Starfall going down. We're going to be able to finish it down, so that's pretty nice. Uh, at this point, we can just stay and poke, to be honest. Like, uh, we're in a very losing situation at the moment. Actually, I think could have engaged on me there pretty easily, but I guess he wasn't confident enough uh, near the fort. Uh, but generally I'm just trying to trade and keep my combo up as you can see I have 22 hit combo I uh, generally want to be keeping the combo as much as possible because I have specced in talents that give Let's see one of those talents is movement speed I'm going to try to dodge that Aurak engage like a boss there But they're going to re-engage the Bloodlust That movement speed helped me a lot to dodge the Aurak damage uh, Now Aurak going a bit deep I'm going to be doing some damage throwing the cocktail there for some bonus damage My ulti is up I see a wall Rhaegar going to try to engage, but the swap from Rhaegar is not allowing me to do this. Alright, 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 I'm going to... I'm not going to waste my ulti actually, because Tyrande was an easy kill anyway. So we're going to finally be able to return the fire. Only Vala left, and I'm going to try to chase the Vala, because I generally feel pretty confident for a 1 versus 1. Uh, I didn't saw where, where she went. She probably went to the left, but I'm going to try to the right here because it's the safer path. She went for the 
uh, risky path where you probably wouldn't expect her to go there so she made her escape and which is I wouldn't have done the same to us uh, I'm going to actually do some damage to finish out this fort so we're ahead on the siege damage my team is doing some siege damage on the bottom and I'm going to start securing this camp real fast to the immortal spawn now I can see my level 16 Italian is going to give me incredible attack speed oh yeah just going to clear this cap camp nice and smooth so I'm going to have a camp here going into the immortal race but they're actually racing pretty fast now with the Tyrant de Mark this time we were the small ones we actually did secure the left camp as well so we're going to be needing to defend now now this is this is uh, I think this is where the last fight happened uh, so Basically their team is going to start attacking the immortal. They're doing a lot of damage. Starfall going down. I'm going to try to go for an upper position. Try to maybe get some of their weaker carries. They have vision on me because of the trend they are. I'm going to reposition. Uh, I'm wondering if I should attack or defend. I don't know. I don't know. Because they're not forcing that much damage. But I'm going to. Uh, they're going into the was So that's not cool. Actually this isn't the last fight. But I'm going to go help Liming there. Oh she's going to get deleted. And I'm going keeping the damage on Rhaegar, which is going to be very nice. I went and go for the throat, and our team actually managed to clear their team, so I'm going to start doing damage on the Immortal. Uh, a lot of trading back and forth, but we have left the hack up, so that's pretty nice. We have two camps uh, pushing very nicely on a fourth down, and I'm just going to solo secure this Immortal. Um, nice and easy, the hacker is going to do some split pushing there, so this is going to be going very nice for us. See that attack speed? That's why uh, Graemin is top tier for this map, man. Because he just burns the Immortal Soul. Like 400 damage with such a good attack speed is insane. Uh, so, this actually wasn't the last fight. Uh, there's one big fight coming ahead. Actually two probably because the Immortal hasn't died. Because I remember how this game ends. And it's not the end yet. Uh, but... Uh, oh, the hacker grabbing HC, they're living coming. Yeah, that's not going to be enough. Now, here the problem is that I think the problem here was because that someone got caught before Karazim went. I don't know, the living got caught. Something went went terribly bad here, and I don't remember what was it. Uh, Trandem are actually helping for the immortal quite a lot. They're, they're burning down the immortal quite nicely. Starfall doing some very annoying damage. Aurak, oh, Aurak is going to get me. Fuck. I'm trying to escape. Oh, I jump! No, Aurak. Oh, we are getting combos from every side there. The Ragnarok smash also missing. We're going to be able to secure every single fort here, which is pretty nice. But yeah, we now have 50 seconds dead timer. They're probably going to try to backdoor something. Basically, everyone from us got this position there and got owned. First, it was me by Aurak, but then. Uh, Glorious HC would landed. I think he got three people. I know why I actually jumped on ATC. I think it was a instinct maneuver for me to escape Aurak, but I forgot that ATC was in the mosh pit. Now we have 20 seconds left. We got level 20. They actually do have time to deal some damage, but the Haka is still roaming around here. They don't seem very confident. Maybe they just don't want to over push it at the moment. Especially. Uh, with the two lines being pushed with catapults, Rhaegar is going to go back. Right, I went for the Bunderbuss talent. I think, in my opinion, this is a better uh, talent than any of the upgrades. Even the Go for the Throat upgrade. The, though the Go for the Throat upgrade does give you a very nice damage increase. After an execution, I think the Bunderbuss is a more sustainable talent choice because it gives you consistent damage while go for the throat is very situational you might actually not even have the opportunity to use it i think just having two two stacks of go for the throat is enough and i do want the extra damage now this is where the last fight was going to happen uh they have the merc camp limink is uh poking there okay okay calm before the storm ragnaros is trying to sneak out on the behind there Maybe he wants to go for the Molten Core on the fort. Uh, though I don't think he, he's in a very bad, a good spot. Actually, they wouldn't actually go to check that bush, but... Yeah. 
I don't know, it's pretty risky in general, so we're going to be staying here to defend, I guess. Uh, both lanes have camps. Huh. Both lanes have camps pushing. Uh, I know, I think I, it's going to be better for me to stay with the team. The other camps are pretty low there, so I think I can finish them out uh, generally fast. Especially at least the two Merc ones. So I remove some pressure uh, from the map. Our camp at least is pushing on the top. So the team is going to start racing there. And now we're going to start poking. I'm going to go. Oh, start off going down. Nice pickup on, on Tyrande there. Uh, she's going to get cleansed, so I'm going to try to maybe re-engage on the Tyrande on the side. I'm going to try to do the AC going with the stun, Tyrande missing the stun. Ragnaros smash! I'm going to go, go for the throw two times, three times. AC going for duty, but their team is dead. And yeah, this is going to be a game. Now that happened pretty fast. This is probably the reason why I wanted to show this video, because of this last fight. Uh, it, it really wasn't very mind-blowing, just some very fast things happening. I thought it was generally pretty beautiful, so yeah, it's something. Uh, so we're just going to finish out the core. I really like. Uh, I actually got caught up there, but I really liked our team reaction, especially that Ragnaros smash was on point there, and I did manage to pick one two kills there until that ATC ulti landed, and Limic also got some resets, so that's pretty nice. MVP is going to be on the hacker. 44% immortal damage, excellent. Uh, did I get a vote to anyone? The hacker maybe? Myself? Eh? No one. No one deserves, not even me. <laughs> Alright, this is going to be everything for me from uh, today, guys. So, thank you for watching. And until next time, stay righteous. Especially to be trading in tanks, I'm not going to have any problem with that. I went for also the level 16 Manticore talent. This is basically the anti tank talent. Every third attack is going to deal bonus. HP damage versus the same target. Now, I'm actually pretty confident here, but not versus a Bloodlust. Uh, the Swole Traps are actually going to help me out a bit there. Muradin not having the range there to stun me.